Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This is the first video of a new series I'll be doing, about drivers that were really successful earlier in their career, but could never achieve the same success afterward. I will also include some drivers that had a lot of potential, but were unsuccessful due to being in mediocre teams. In this video, I will be talking about Jack Fielnerve. So yeah guys, let's get into things, but remember, if you enjoy my videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave the drivers you want me to do in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Twitter, which I will put in the description. Jacques Villeneuve had an F1 career in reverse. He won many races as a rookie, was world champion in his second year, but spent his later career in mediocre teams. This is the story of how Jacques Villeneuve went from being a world champion for Williams to having 11 straight retirements just two years later. I will talk about what led to his decline and what he could have done differently. Like I said, Jacques Villeneuve was very successful at the start of his career, so that's what I'm going to talk about. He started out in IndyCar and was successful right from the outset, winning the 1995 Indianapolis 500. This gained him a lot of attention and a combination of his success in IndyCar and his family name being the son of Gilles Villeneuve got him to be signed by Williams for the 1996 season. And Villeneuve hit the ground running by kicking pole in his debut race and he finished second. He would have won if it wasn't for an, for an oil leak. Only Kevin Magnussen and Lewis Hamilton had finished on the podium in their debut race since Villeneuve did it. Villeneuve won his first race in the 1996 German GP. In 1996's debut season, he won a record four races. Although he didn't win a championship, he lost to a more experienced Damon Hill. He still uh, had a very strong year. He was the first rookie to finish second. Only Lewis Hamilton has done this since. Coming into the 1997 season, Jacques Villeneuve now had a solid year of F1 under his belt and was now the lead driver at Williams since Damon Hill had been dropped. Williams had a much better car than their nearest rivals Ferrari, but unfortunately for them, it was Michael Schumacher at the wheel of that Ferrari, and man did he outdrive that car. The Ferrari was nowhere near the level of the Williams, but Schumacher managed to win 5 races that season and was even leading Villeneuve by a point going into the final race. Qualifying for the 1997 European GP was one of the best in history. Three drivers, Michael Schumacher, Jacques Villeneuve, and Heinz Harald Fretzen all set an identical lap time to the thousandth of a second. But it was Villeneuve that was on pole since he was the first one to set the lap time. However, this race weekend wasn't remembered for the historic qualifying, but for the controversial incident that happened during the race. Although Villeneuve was on pole, Schumacher had a great start taking the lead and was there for most of the race. However, in the closing stages, Villeneuve started to catch up and attempted a pass on Schumacher. Knowing that he would lose the championship if Villeneuve got passed, Schumacher deliberately turned into the Canadian's car and his Ferrari's front wheel collided with the side of Villeneuve's Williams, taking Schumacher out of the race. His attempt to take Villeneuve out backfired and not only did he lose the championship, he was sub subsequently disqualified making Jacques Villeneuve the 1997 F1 World Champion in only his second season. Jacques Villeneuve's career took a turn for the worst in the 1998 season. Even though Williams were reigning Constructors' Champions, they were about to go into sharp decline. Adrian Newey had left for McLaren and Renault had also pulled out, which meant that they basically had a 1997 car adjusted for new regulations. They were extremely uncompetitive, and Villeneuve only finished 5th, a terrible title defense. After an atrocious title defense in 1998, Jacques Villeneuve's career was at a crossroads. He could either try to rebuild with Williams or move to a different team. He decided to move to a different team and signed with a new F1 team called British American Racing or BAR for the 1999 season. But this proved to be the move that put the nail in the coffin and completely ruined his F1 career. BAR was woefully uncompetitive right from the outset. Villeneuve did not score a single point the entire 1999 season and failed to finish the first 11 races. Considering that they had a fairly large budget, 
this was very disappointing and there were teams with much, much less money that were doing a lot better. Villeneuve had a terrible first season at BAR, but the following season, the 2000 season, which is, was a huge improvement. That year, Honda was supplying the team with engines, and the better engine gave the car a massive performance and reliability boost. Villeneuve had a best finish of fourth, so things seemed to be moving in the right direction, and Villeneuve was convinced to stay with the team. However, in the years following, not much progress was made. Under immense pressure from sponsors, Villeneuve's former driver manager and BAR team principal Craig Pollock resigned. I don't want to get too much into the politics, but basically the new management of VAR wasn't very happy with Villeneuve and he was replaced by Takuma Sato at the end of 2003. Things just work weren't working out for him at VAR. The car was awful, and he was consistently outpaced by the younger Jensen Button. It was time for Jacques Villeneuve to move on from BAR. Because Jacques Villeneuve had no contract for 2004, he took a sabbatical. Things were looking bleak for Villeneuve, but there was still hope. He stayed in shape for much of 2004 and drove the final three races of the season for Renault as a replacement for Yano Trulli. This was his chance to prove that he was still a top driver, and he finally had a half-decent car to do it. However, a combination of being away from the sport and not being used to much faster cars than in 2003 led to Villeneuve's comeback being a truly disastrous one. He failed to score a point in all three races, and what's ironic is that as a result of Villeneuve's poor performances, Renault lost second place in the Constructors' Championship to Villeneuve's former team, BAR. After that, he had a forgettable two seasons at Sauber, and that was the end of his F1 career. As you can see, Jacques Villeneuve made many poor career choices that limited his chance of success in Formula 1. Like I talked about, choosing to drive for BAR was a move that killed his career. So the question is, what could he have done differently, and how would his career have been different if he had made better career choices? Well, let me answer the first question. What he could have done differently. After an atrocious 1998 season, Villeneuve had three possible choices. He could either stay with Williams, or go to BAR like his manager suggested, or move to a completely different team. I don't think staying at Williams was a good option because they continued to decline until the early 2000s. Williams haven't won a championship since 1997, and the last time they even came close was 2003. We already know that going to BAR was a bad option because that was the option that Villeneuve picked, and judging by the way the rest of his career panned out, I don't think this was a great decision. So this means that the best option for Villeneuve at the time was to go to a completely different team and that team was McLaren. Speaking to a French publication, Jacques Villeneuve actually admitted that McLaren offered him a drive for the 1999 season. That's right, eventual champions McLaren offered the Canadian driver a seat for that upcoming year. I'll include the article in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But 1999 was the year technical director Adrian Newey had left Williams for McLaren and he wanted Villeneuve to join him. Villeneuve would have replaced David Coulthard, who was on the final year of his contract. If Jacques Villeneuve had accepted this offer, he would have partnered Mika Hakkinen at McLaren. While I don't think that Villeneuve would have won another championship there, he would have certainly been a contender and would have won many races. Ultimately, Hakkinen was the better driver, and he would have most likely been McLaren's number one to fight Michael Schumacher. But winning races at McLaren certainly beats breaking down all the time at BAR. Jacques Villeneuve will be remembered as the F1 driver that had a career in reverse. He was world champion in his second season, but never won a single race after that. Bad career choices were what led to his downfall. After a few seasons at mediocre BAR, Villeneuve's motivation level dropped, and so did his performances. Although he was a very talented driver, he was very difficult to work with, and bad decisions ruined his career. 
Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Kids love F1, I would really appreciate it. In the next few days, I'll be uploading many more videos like this one, which will include historical videos, opinion pieces, and obviously race reviews. This is the first video of my Rise and Fall series, so if you want me to do a, a particular driver, then leave your suggestions in the comments below. And please leave any of your thoughts or opinions on the video and this topic. I respond to all comments and I love some good discussions. As always, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Bye.